All right, everyone, let's get into this. I want to show um, how we run our fast break. It's uh, not rocket science. It's a lot of teams that run this. And it, and like we do on everything we run, every set, every offense, every out-of-bounds play, whatever we run, we always make reads. Defensively, we make reads. Offensively, we make reads as well. So in our transition, the key is we want movement. And there's a lot of things you can do with regards to to the movement that we're producing but you know whoever gets the rebound the first person and the second person that get out in these lanes we want them to cross and it's essential that we sprint as fast as we can I want to get down the court usually the ball will be back in here because the rebound was made and outletted and maybe these guys are taken off so the you should be far ahead of the ball now if you're not then you wouldn't cross Okay, but we're assuming that you are ahead of the ball. So when you cross, the two trailers that are coming down are now going to pin down and set pin down screens as if we were in 14. These players are coming off of those pin downs. Now the ball will be coming up. It'll be passed in a direction, and they will screen away. So the opposite shooter will come off a double stagger. It's real simple. But we want to sprint down the floor and cross. Now, if, you know, like I said, there's many layers to this. And this is a real simplified approach. Uh, this guy running the lane has made two straight threes. So, therefore, this guy running the lane will set a screen here first if there's a hot shooter. So, when this guy's coming off of this, he's coming off of a screen. And then the trailer would set the second screen. And then you still have a trailer here. So after the screen is set, he's still coming. Then the ball will be looked to pass there off a double stagger. You could pass it here and then set a triple stagger. So this guy will come off a screen one, two, and then three. And then look for some kind of elbow to three-point line jump shot there. These are reads. Okay, so if a guy's hot, you don't have to call it. This guy just sets the screen. If the other shooter is the hot shooter, then obviously we would go the other way. This guy's coming. This guy's coming. He sets the screen first so that this guy comes off of that screen. Then we have the pin downs, and then we have the ball handler. There's a lot of reads that make it difficult to guard. If they are assuming that you're going to cross and they kind of cheat, you stop and you come back out. It's not rocket science. If there's a guy defending you and he's kind of cheating through that. Or you could run the lane and just kind of stop if you feel that the defender's back ahead of you and he's giving you that space. Then we look ahead and we throw it there. It's not like you have to cross every single time. That is, but but with the constant movement, it is difficult to defend if you're constantly moving and you're constantly making reads. There are other reads you can make. You can make reads as the pin down guy. So these guys are crossing, okay? This guy's pinning down. Well, he's not being guarded. He doesn't need to pin down. He could stop here, and we can kick it to the shooter. Or he could slip the screen. He's pinning down. He slips it. We could kick it to him right away. If the guy guarding him looks like he is reaching out. Now, a lot of times, we've had a lot of success on this, and then the pin down guy will step out. So as that guy's coming, the pin down here, the defender will step out and sneak out a little bit to take away that shooter. So you slip it because this guy's kind of coattailing him. So you slip it right away. Okay, there's a lot. There's just a lot of things you can do. After the pin downs occur. Okay, so this is after the pin down. We have a pin down here. We have a pin down here. Guys have come off of each. Okay, if we get the ball here. This guy's screening away. He doesn't have to screen away. He could screen on ball. He can cut. If we have a mismatch here for whatever reason, they switched, we can then clear and then dump it in and take advantage of the mismatch. If they didn't, you can go block to block off of these two pin down screens. There's just a lot of things you can do. So if you were coming this way, let's say, and you're coming that way, and then you set that pin down coming down to trail 
and they switched and the big pin down came out and then that left the guard stuck behind this then you would just post up we would throw it there we would isolate this guy instead of screening away he would probably just isolate to here this guy who came out would be here the pin down guy would then pop to vacate the post so that now we could dump it in there and look for a post mismatch and then again if he caught it here didn't have the shot looked into there didn't have anything he would screen away and we could go block to block there's just a ton of things that we have done in the past that that have worked I remember one time we diagrammed this off a timeout where we ran the cross okay and the guards are out here and we passed it there and then the pin downs were here so then off of the balls here now so then off of that the ball is here if we trailed it late he's out in the perimeter he would set a back screen and this guy would come off that lob and we would throw it there so he would go to the pin down and set the pin down first and then do that or he might just slip the pin down and go off to the back door cut set that guy up and come off that back door lob and then if that didn't happen then you have the kick out here for ball reversal again a ton of things that you could run that are very effective in transition and this is your transition and it really is effective because you're trying to score before the defense can get set especially if you're facing a very good defensive team okay again some of the other things that we have run in the transition set and there's just so many things we can do and we're you know the better you get the smarter you get but again with the transition make sure I spell right um, sometimes we call we call a, a sideline oops got the s in there sideline I'm trying to make sure I can't really write well with the pen but whatever so what we would do is if the ball was out in front and we could bring the ball up to sideline now what we have done on this one is we really want a big man to sprint it's really good if you have a great big man that can run and you want the big man to run to that block strong side block now we always teach our bigs to run down the middle of the floor and then seal and then look for that quick hit so we want bigs we've had some bigs in the past that can really run well so he's gonna run down to that spot okay so let's replay this now and, the, and we again we would call this sideline oops got to hit the right buttons here okay so the ball comes down the sideline and we have a big man let's just put him in the post now we're going to have different role guys so we could run sideline where we're going to have two guys running up the gut and a third guy running up the lane balls here so then if he doesn't have that quick hit he can ball reversal and it's almost like a flex where that's a back screen that you're looking for on that back screen on that lob here he would then pin down its flex and he would come off of that now if they got some action on that back screen where maybe the lob wasn't there but they switched it then you could throw it into that wing and then you got a post mismatch you got the shooter coming off here after this and you roll don't get it you pop out so we could space the floor and this would be ball coming down the sideline where you're looking for the post right away if the post guy can sprint if not you're swinging it and you might have guys open and you might swing it here if he's open but on the swing we got the back screen now this guy could take the back screen he could we call it you know roll the post he could push that post guy where he rolls into the post and then he comes off of that screen there if he throws it there he could screen away again and now you've got guy coming off a double stagger so on that one we would call sideline flex let's see if I can write on this sideline flex okay where well, you're really looking for that back screen if you can get there quick and then you could run another thing where we kind of call uh, for the shooter right away so again the guy comes down to the post you've got the guy sprinting down here if you've got another guy sprinting down here these two trailers will set staggers for him to come off and now you still got the post option but you're really looking for this guy coming off of that and then after you set the screens obviously you make reads he could float he could dive there's a ton of things so we would call that you know sideline stagger 
hey, let's run sideline stagger next time. Someone's going to push it here. We're always going to hit the post. And the post guy who runs that post doesn't necessarily have to be a post player. It could be a guard. It's the guy who can get there the quickest, and we're looking for that. And then as you're looking there, and these guys are both trailing, and they're screening away as a trailer, and this guy comes off. So again, you know, that's something that we use. You know, we'll call out uh, drag. Where, you know, the guy, the guy might be, let's say these two guys came down early and crossed, or for whatever reason. And one guy was pinning down, but then the outlet came to a guard, and this guy's way behind. So he'd be on this side. So he's not going to have time to pin down. So we would just drag him and set an on-ball. So he would come off looking for an on-ball. This guy would then flare to the corner. And you're, you're basically running like a MJ type screen that we have run before. So if I yell out drag, or it doesn't even have to be yelled out. It could be more of a read where this guy crossed, that guy crossed, this guy pinned down. The ball's coming and the other pinned down guy's behind the ball. For whatever reason, he got jammed up in here on the board. He had to dive over here to get it and kick it out. So he's not going to be able to get ahead of the ball to set that pin down. Well, he's going to drag it. He's going to sprint. And then he's going to drag. And he's going to come off of that. This guy now would float into the corner. So now he's coming off of that drag, attacking the rim, where you've got the option there, just like you would in horns. After the pin down, you would open up and space out. And if you wanted to, you know, this guy who's coming off, if he was way early, he could even set that second screen as a horn. If there's a delay back here for whatever reason. So these are things that, you know, are we, we try to emphasize making reads. We want everything to be a read. It's not easy to predict. You can't defend one thing. If they take one thing away, you, you take what they give you. You know, if they're going to cheat on that second screen, which the one thing we see the most is where the second pin, the pin down guys, their defenders hedge and, and, and step out and take away that shooter because the guy's being defended with a with a, a coattail screen or coattail defensive philosophy where he's following the shooter it's real easy to slip that screen it's real easy just to slip it and then you get layups and then with you know another thing that we didn't really mention but you know with the long side the reads the better we are at this and we've got guys flying down the lanes and people setting screens then the guy with the ball can oftentimes just get right to the rim because they're so concerned about all this action that they kind of let that little that mid guy go right to the rim with no help so th so to me transition offense is is extremely important you know I've always said I'd like to you know I'd like to have more than 50 percent of our points come in transition and out of bounds place you know and uh, usually if unless teams are really bad defensively you don't want to face a team that's set defensively usually because you know that would be their best opportunity to stop you. So you want to get down the floor before the defense gets set or in an out-of-bounds play where you can really have time to set up what you want to do. Um, those are things that I think are extremely essential. So transition is very important to us. We practice it. You have to be in shape. And we have guys that are in shape. So late in the game, fourth quarter, they're able to run up and down these lanes. Um, late in the second half, you know, where other players might be tired. And then you're, you're just making a ton of reads. And it's not complicated. It's not rocket science. It's effort-based. Get out and run the floor and uh, and make reads. And we've had guys that many would consider to be real small just get open and, and hit four, five, six threes in a game because they're just, they just can't be found. And we have great guys setting screens. And usually you hear coaches whining about screens like, come on, those screens are illegal. Those are illegal. They're not illegal. They're just good. So um, this is our transition philosophy. It's not rocket science, but if I have guys that don't run the floor, and if I have guys that don't cross, then I just take them out. You know, and again, you're not going to cross if you're even with the ball, or if you are behind the ball. I mean, obviously. You know, now you might still, but you know, and then there's a lot of things you can do on the other side of it. But if the ball is here and I'm there, I'm not going to cross. Okay, because because we're looking to run lanes, you know, and just finish. You're going to finish with like a, a typical fast break. Um, but we also have the option of setting back screens. You know, and we've done this a lot. Where we'll come down and when you're crossing, you're setting the back screen. And we might just have one side do it. So the guys who are typically setting the pin down now are coming off a back screen. 
So you're coming down, you're putting your fist in the air like you're going to set the pin down, and then you get the back screen. And we really hammer a guy here because they don't talk on defense. And we get that easy backdoor cut. And if you, if the guard is clear where he could vision that, if not, he'll be wide open coming off. So, and that comes down to the cross. If the guy setting, if the guy coming off early, because we always want the first guy, whoever's out, he's taken off and crossing. If this guy's a big and he's not a shooter, then he'll set that back screen. And then the second guy would be the Trent, the, the pin down guy might be a guard. And you don't have to set the, the back door here. You might be able to set it here if you're early enough and really look for that and push that ball and, you know, dime it right through there. And again, if he's not, you still might have this other, you know, that you have this other guy coming this way off. This guy might set the pin down and then set a secondary. And then he could come off of that. He'll be wide open, swing, swing. There's just so many things you can do from back picks to uh, drag screens to, uh, you know, sideline flex, sideline stagger. There's just there's just a million things you can do. But the key is to get those guys out and up. That's the key to get them up the floor and running wide and thick lanes. And then, you know, a lot of times, a lot of times you might not even have the big guys down there yet because they got muddled up in here and you're just bringing in them just crossing gets them open. You throw the ball there and then you cut. It's like a give and go. So again, it, it, these are these are things that have been very successful for us. But for me, it's essential. If I have guys that don't cross, I just take them out. That means they're tired and out of shape. So um, I'll put someone in there that's fresh that can run those lanes the right way because when you run lanes hard, you just get a ton more opportunities. So hopefully this helps. Um, study the film, practice it, get ready for it at practice. We're going to be uh, a much more effective team if we can perform uh, transition sets in in uh, in a hurry all game long. So we'll see you in the gym.